Namaste. So, now it's clear. Nobody has been able to post a comment on the topic of dependent arising. We got dozens of comments off topic. But despite my direct challenge, nobody has been able to do it. There's been a few, I think, five comments on yesterday's video. None of them were on topic. They were all off topic. So what does that mean? You know, I mean, the second video on this channel back in the foundation series was about Paticca Samuppada. Of course, in those videos, I call it the process of becoming, but it means the same thing. So since the very beginning of this channel, we've been talking about Paticca Samuppada, seven years. And all the work that we've done on this channel, all the different series are based on it. So I often used to wonder, why is it that nobody's getting it? Huh? I mean, I went to a lot of trouble. I made graphics, you know. I got a really nice camera, did some beautiful cinematography, you know, cool sound and stuff like that. It didn't seem to make any difference. No matter what I did, no matter how carefully I presented the ideas, nobody was getting it. So now, finally, it's all clear, you know. I mean, I've been in relationships like this before. You, you go into a relationship with certain assumptions. Huh? I'm interested in you, you're interested in me, right? <laughs> so it happened in several relationships where I spent a long time and a lot of effort to understand the other person, whether it's a romantic relationship, a partnership, business relationship, or whatever. I spent a lot of time and effort to find out what the other person likes, what their interests are, you know, so on and so forth, right? So I can please them, so I can meet their needs. But did they spend an equivalent amount of time and effort looking into my needs, my interests, my purposes in life, and so on? No. No. And then it comes out, you know, after a couple of years, oh, actually, I have no interest in that spiritual stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm like, get out of town. This relationship is over. Why? Because of a lack of integrity. How would you feel, huh? You're in a relationship with somebody for years, and you're doing your best to find out what their interests are and to please them. And then you realize after some time, oh, actually, they're not reciprocating it at all. They're just taking what they can get. And there's no, nothing in return. Well, that's the way I feel about this channel. It's like I've put seven years, eight years of hard effort into this channel. And considerable expense, equipment and stuff, and time. But since the beginning of the channel, actually, nobody, even people who've been with us from beginning of this channel, don't understand Paticca Samuppada. This is like, meant, this is incomprehensible to me. You know, I think it indicates a, a mental handicap a learning disability, a blind spot that you guys, individually or collectively, are unable to penetrate this concept of Paticca Samuppada. It's not difficult. Huh? Ignorance causes sankara, sankaras cause consciousness, consciousness causes name and form, etc. What's so hard about that? Well, I'll tell you what's hard about it. 
You have been brainwashed by state education to be an extremist, a dualist, somebody who sees things in terms of black and white, right and wrong, good and bad. But the Buddha's path is the middle way. See? No, you don't see. <laughs> I know you don't see. <laughs> because Paticca Samuppada is the middle path. So I think you have a learning disability. I think you have a mental handicap. I, I know for sure you have a blind spot about this Paticca Samuppada. And we are not going to be able to make any more progress until some of you, at least, get it. So we are going to stick to this point until it, we get through. And only then we're going to go on. I don't care if half the subscribers cancel or whatever, the number of views goes down. Or I, I don't give a darn. I'm not dependent on this channel for anything. I can easily walk away. But you, <laughs> who else is going to tell you the truth? Who else has no organizational axe to grind? Uh, no bias? Who else is not trying to sell you anything? Huh? So try to understand. If you're going to hear the truth, it's going to be here. And the truth is, Paticca Samuppada, dependent arising, is the key to the Buddha's teaching, the key to the Buddha's enlightenment, the key to right view, the key to the Eightfold Path. Because right view is the first item on the Eightfold Noble Path. And without right view, Take it from me, you're not going to get anywhere in meditation. So, I want to continue, but I want to enforce the discipline of on-topic comments. So from now on, we're not taking any more comments on this series that are not directly about Paticca Samuppada. Is that clear? Okay, so now I'm going to read us another sutta, the Kachanagota Sutta, from the same section of Samyutta Nikaya, the Connected Discourses on Causation. At Savati. Then the Venerable Kachanagota approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down on one side and said to him, Venerable sir, it is said, right view, right view. In what way, venerable sir, is there right view? The Buddha replied, This world, Kachana, for the most part, depends upon a duality, upon the notion of existence and the notion of non-existence. But for one who sees the origin of the world as it really is, with correct wisdom, there is no notion of non-existence in regard to the world. And for one who sees the cessation of the world as it really is, with correct wisdom, there is no notion of existence in regard to the world. This world, Kachana, is for the most part shackled by engagement, clinging, and adherence. But this one with right view does not become engaged and cling through that engagement and clinging. Mental standpoint, adherence, underlying tendency. He does not take a stand about myself. He has no perplexity or doubt that what arises is only suffering arising. What ceases is only suffering ceasing. His knowledge about this is independent of others. It is in this way, Kachana, that there is right view. 
All exists. Kachana, this is one extreme. All does not exist. This is the second extreme. Without veering towards either of these extremes, the Tathagata teaches the Dhamma by the middle. When this exists, this comes to be. With the arising of this, this arises. When this does not exist, this does not arise. With the cessation of this, this ceases. That is, with ignorance as condition, sankara arise. With sankara as condition, consciousness arises. With consciousness as condition, name and form arise. With name and form as condition, the six sense spheres arise. With the six sense spheres as condition, contact arises. With contact as condition, feeling arises. With feeling as condition, craving arises. With craving as condition, grasping arises. With grasping as condition, becoming arises. With becoming as condition, birth arises. With birth as condition arise decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. Such is the arising of this entire mass of suffering. But with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance comes cessation of sankhara. With cessation of sankhara comes cessation of consciousness. With cessation of consciousness comes cessation of name and form. With cessation of name and form comes cessation of the six sense spheres. With cessation of six sense spheres comes cessation of contact. With cessation of contact comes cessation of feeling. With cessation of feeling comes cessation of craving. With cessation of craving comes cessation of grasping. With cessation of grasping comes cessation of becoming. With cessation of becoming comes cessation of birth. And with cessation of birth, decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair cease. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. So the Buddha doesn't see that I am a self, I am an individual, I am an ego. He sees there's a clinging to ignorance and because of this clinging, all this other stuff arises. And then when that clinging to ignorance disappears, everything else ceases as well. Including the illusion of I am, this individual self. You know, it's just like if you've ever been out in the desert and seen a dust devil, a dust devil is like a miniature tornado due to heat. So when the conditions are right for the arising of this little tornado, then it pops up. It's, it's not like somebody's doing it. Nobody's making it happen. Nobody's saying, okay, now I'm gonna make a dust devil. <laughs> It just happens. It's natural. In the same way, this vortex, this tornado, this little whirlpool of dust and wind becomes uh, due to conditions. And when those conditions change, it disappears. So in the same way, this mind, this body, this self, this ego, all the phenomena that we call I appear due to certain conditions. And when the conditions change, it disappears. It all disappears. But if we remain clinging to ignorance, then of course we can start up another one. And that's how people get trapped in samsara. They cling to the notion, I am. And they resist the perception, I am not. Caught between these two extremes, a vortex arises called the mind. And that's how we get trapped. 
And by stopping that vortex, that's how we become free. That's the middle path. Without knowledge of this middle path, without knowledge of uh, dependent arising, you don't have right view. And without right view, you can't enter the path. So it's essential that you understand this Paticca Samuppada. And we're going to keep banging on this point until at least a few of you finally get it and get on the path to enlightenment. Buddha Saranai. <laughs>